Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, you beautiful gemstones. This is Ruby again, coming to you with a video. A <laughs> video, video. Well, I want to talk about something. I want to talk about something that happened to me in, I believe it was the year of 1982. Um, I was in a car accident. And you're probably saying, why would you want to talk about that? Well, the reason why I want to talk about it, because I'm always talking to you about healing, deliverance, God's love and everything. Because I've been delivered and healed from a lot of different things. So I just want to talk to you about it because you might be going through some things in your body or different things, finances or whatever. But I just want to say this is why I talk about it because he's done so much for me. So like I said, I was in this accident uh, and I probably shouldn't have gone because I felt like I shouldn't have gone. At the time, I was selling Tupperware. And the lady that I had just met, we just met because of selling Tupperware, she came to pick me up. And my husband was saying, I feel like you shouldn't go. Well, I had already felt like I shouldn't, but you know, I know she was coming to pick me up, so I went anyway. And we went to the Tupperware meeting, as a Tupperware meeting usually goes. And after that meeting was over, uh, everybody was leaving, you know, shook hands, said hi and whatever. And we went out to get in her car. And everybody was getting in their cars. We were going to leave and she was going to bring me home. And as we were coming down the driveway, we were sticking out a little bit out of the driveway. And I, it was snowing and it was raining. Snowflakes and it was raining. And I look out of my window, the passenger window, and I see this car. But it's out of control. And I look over to her and I said, it's going to hit. And it hit the side of the vehicle so hard till we went into this gully like over to the side of this driveway. She looked over and I was pent in the car from the dashboard. She says, oh my God. She was able to get out to go up from this gully or whatever it was, a hill, to try to go get help for me because I was pent, the dashboard was pent into me. Well, I guess I was so nervous and scared and I started praying and I kind of took my hands and pushed, as I'm praying, the dashboard came off of me. But when it came off of me, I was, I guess I was so afraid or whatever, anxiety, whatever was going on over me, I got out of the vehicle, ran up that gully, running down the highway in shock. I'm running down the highway and I can hear him say, catch her, catch her. And I'm running and they catch me. Now, I don't know where I was going. <laughs> But I guess I was in shock. And I'm laughing about it now, but I wasn't laughing about it then. Well, they caught me. And this is so strange. People were driving by and they were trying to take me to the vehicle, somebody's vehicle to sit me down until they could get the ambulance to come or whatever. And my arm, my right arm, 
was locked up like this. I didn't even realize it. It was locked up. And I, we, they couldn't get it down. I couldn't get it down. And uh, the next thing I know, the Lord must have sent a nurse riding in that area. And she came to the car and she says, um, I, she says, she's looking at me, looking at my whole body. She says, don't move. And my mouth is hurting because my teeth have been pushed in, too. And uh, she said, don't touch your mouth. She said, I'm a nurse or whatever. And she said, uh, we've called for the ambulance and they should be here soon. And my whole body was hurting and I don't know why I was hurting so bad and feel like I couldn't breathe. But when the Amalams came, <laughs> they couldn't get me on the stretcher because they couldn't hardly bend my body and my arm wouldn't go down. And I was hurting so bad. And as they got me in the Amalams, you know, and whatever, doing whatever they had to do to me and whatever. And, uh, when we got ready to take off, they were speeding, right? Or of course they were speeding because they were trying to get to the hospital to take me there in a hurry. But I look at them, I said, listen, I already been in one accident. Could y'all slow down? <laughs> now, it wasn't funny then, but it's funny now when I think about it. And, 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 and they say, yeah, we know, but we're trying to get you there in a hurry. And, um, uh, when I got there, my family was called, my husband was called and everything at that time. Well, um, and so I'm there laying on the bed, my sister's there, my baby sister, who's always there. You know, my mother, everybody was there. And uh, she's looking at me. I said, can you give me a mirror? She says, no, I'm not going to give you a mirror. I said, why not? She said, because you look beautiful. You don't need. She didn't want me to see how messed up my face was and my teeth were. That's what it was. But she kept saying, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. She would not give me a mirror. Well, they called my pastor. And maybe some of you might know her, Pastor Eula M. Nelson from Bible Way Healing Temple. And uh, she got there, and when she got there, she came in the room. She talked or whatever, and, you know, she you know, said, will you believe God? You know he's a healer, right? I said, yes. Well, she saw my arm. It could not come down. It was locked. What, whatever through that accident, my arm was truly locked. And she says, we're going to pray and we're going to believe God for your arm to come down. Even the doctors, and they couldn't get it down. <laughs> so she began to pray. She began to pray. And um, when she began to pray, she was praying and praying, and as she was praying, she was doing my arm, lifting, and I'm believing God. And my arm came all the way up. And when it came all the way up, I started praising God. But in the process, I had six fractured ribs and a collapsed lung. And they told me, you know, they were going to have to put tubes or whatever to in. in they were going to wait to see if by the next day, probably to inflate the lung. And uh, my pastor, when she heard them, she played, prayed for my lung to come up, and my lung came up. And I had the six fracture ribs, and I couldn't go home. They kept me. But I want to say this. 
when people are feeling something and they tell you not to go here because they feel that you shouldn't and you know within yourself that you shouldn't then you should listen because sometimes the Lord is using people to warn you well if I would have never went and stayed home I would have never been in that car accident but because the Lord had mercy and grace on me, he touched my body. He healed my body. But to say this, my teeth were pushed down. Uh, I had to go to a dentist while I was there the next day. The next morning, uh, they brought my teeth back up, but they said, we don't know if we're going to be able to save them. But um, a piece of my lip was missing. And sometimes when I smile, you can see that that piece is missing. But if, you know, you don't see it, you won't know it. But if I show you, you wouldn't know it. But um, so, you know, as time went on, I came out of the hospital. But as days went on, Something starts smelling rotten. And my sister, my older sister said, Ruby, oh my God, your mouth smells like dead meat. Like something dead. Well, it was so bad. So you talking about bad breath? <laughs> it was bad breath. Okay. Nobody could stand to be around me. I, I couldn't even stand it. But I went to a service one Sunday night. And I don't know, they called up the prayer line and I went up and I guess the pastor must have smelled it. But she laid her hands on my mouth and she prayed. I don't remember the exact word she prayed. But that night, my the smell left my mouth and my teeth tightened back up. But I had to go to the dentist for uh, a year, almost a whole year, back and forth, back and forth. But my ribs healed. My lung was fine. This arm was back work in working order. <laughs> and I just want to say that, you know, I always say it though. You probably say, here she goes again, that God truly loves us. And he's truly concerned about our situation and what we do. But we need to listen when we feel something in our spirit. And, you know, I have a grandson that kind of has been going through the Lord dealing with him within his spirit to do certain things. And he's learning. He said, you know, sometimes it's better just to do it when he tells you then than to not do it because you got to pay the penalty. <laughs> And so, you know, we talk about it, and um, I love how he's growing in the Lord. Uh, he's my oldest grandson, and I love how he's growing in the Lord, and I love all my grandchildren. I have eight grandchildren, and I'm very proud of them all. But I want to say to you, let God be your deliverer. Let him heal you. Let him do all the things that you need him to do. And I just want to say, there's going to be more things that I'm going to talk about. Maybe it can help you or somebody out there or a loved one. But I'm going to say this. I love you, you beautiful gemstone. But Jesus loves you more. And I want you to have a blessed day, a blessed evening, a blessed morning, wherever you're at. 
Bye.